Hi, hey, welcome back to WebRTC Tips by WebRTC Ventures. I'm Aaron Syme, CEO and founder of WebRTC Ventures. We are builders of custom live video applications using WebRTC. And today, in this installment of WebRTC Tips, I want to talk to you about a very common architectural discussion that we have with our clients. And that is, should they use a CPaaS WebRTC service or an open source media server? And I'll explain what I mean by that in this video and help you see the pros and cons of those uh, architectural choices for you to make for your live video application. So let's talk about CPaaS and WebRTC. There are uh, actually three ways that we're going to talk about that you could build your WebRTC application because it's not quite as simple as we often talk about initially or when you read sort of the, the introduction to WebRTC blog posts. Uh, they often have a diagram kind of like this one showing a peer-to-peer -peer connection between two users. You have to set up some custom signaling logic, but once you do that custom signaling logic and you follow the WebRTC standard to establish that peer-to-peer -peer connection, then you have this peer-to-peer -peer video, audio, and data channel between the users, and we make it look pretty simple. <laughs> um, and, and in that uh, most straightforward use case, it is pretty simple, but there's still a lot that you need to consider in a WebRTC application that's kind of left out of that diagram, and that means you need to uh, think a little more deeply about your WebRTC architecture. And so examples of those types of things that uh, you need to consider. Definitely stun and turn servers, which are used basically to help create that peer-to-peer -peer connection and uh, route the traffic in the case of a turn server. Uh, the application signaling, which in pretty much any of these architectures, you still have to have a certain degree of custom application signaling just to help those, those different parties connect to each other. Uh, you have to consider things like video codecs, uh, browser support, uh, mobile support if you're using a native mobile development in particular. If you're doing something more complex than one-to-one -one video, which many applications are incorporating some form of group chat or maybe even a broadcasting type of scenario, and you've got to handle scaling of it, that's not really built into the way WebRTC works, so you need to consider that in your architecture as well. And maybe there's other features. Uh, recording is a very common one that you want to build into your WebRTC application. So WebRTC is not quite as simple as this diagram that we often show uh, and talk about. So let's talk about the three different ways you could build your WebRTC application. The first is what I generally call a native WebRTC application. Uh, which uh, just basically means you're building it directly to the WebRTC standard standard itself. You're using the WebRTC libraries. You're not really using anything else to help you around that or, or minimal. Um, second are open source media servers, which are still a uh, generally a, a free solution to use because it's open source, uh, but gives you some wrappers uh, and additional functionality around the WebRTC standard, abstract some of that complexity away for you. And then the third option is a CPaaS, which means a communications platform as a service. So this is a commercial product that you buy access to. You're, uh, generally, it's usage-based, uh, and you pay a monthly fee based on your usage for that. But this further abstracts WebRTC for you, gives you some advantages, uh, takes away some of the complexity of building and managing a WebRTC application for you. Uh, so those are the three ways that we uh, typically talk about native WebRTC, open source media servers, and CPaaS. So let's talk a little bit more about what that means. So first, if you're building directly to the WebRTC standard, and uh, then that is the most complex to do. Basically, you're going to... Uh, uh, in many cases, you're going to have to compile the WebRTC library yourself. You're going to uh, definitely handle your own stun and turn servers and certainly all the application signaling, but you've got to handle some of the lower details as well, like choosing codecs, uh, definitely handling group chat and um, group topologies beyond just a one-to-one -one video chat. You're probably going to have to handle some of the uh, intricacies of, of different browsers and mobile support, and definitely if there's any other 
add-on features that you want, like recording. That's really not part of the WebRTC standard. You're going to build that yourself. So this is a very powerful way to use WebRTC, but it's these days the uh, least likely way you're going to use it uh, because it does have a lot of extra complexity around it. So if you really need to uh, say handle the finer points of how video codecs are done or you're trying to build in um, some artificial intelligence into your application that uh, you need low-level access to the libraries to do that, that's a good choice for building directly to the WebRTC standard, building a, WebRT, a, a native WebRTC application. Uh, open source media servers. There's a number of these that you can look at. And in this case, this uh, gives you a lot of additional functionality. They're going to handle a lot of the details for you, or at least abstract the complexity of those details for you around the video and audio. They uh, will handle uh, part or all of the WebRTC signaling process to establish that peer-to-peer -peer connection. They may include stun and turn capabilities as well. They almost certainly include some form of scaling into a group chat or maybe even a broadcasting scenario. They could be um, SFUs or MCUs, which are different uh, topologies of a WebRTC application that we'll talk about in a different video. And they probably also include uh, a lot of the work around mobile and browser support and handling that for you so that you don't have to think about that in your code. So it's great. It gives you uh, an abstraction uh, a, a layer of abstraction above the WebRTC standard that's going to help you build your application, access a lot of best practices and capabilities. Uh, however, uh, it is an open source library, so you're not paying an upfront fee to use it, but you do need to handle and manage all of your hosting around that. So you need to set up all the infrastructure around that. Um, you need to make sure that you're handling all of the updates to that infrastructure, as well as the updates to those open source media servers that you're using. And um, you're still going to uh, handle a lot of the complexity of scaling your application. So the media server may have some things built into it that, that uh, make it scalable, but you still need to handle the actual scaling of the hardware infrastructure in your cloud. So this is kind of one step uh, less complexity with more features than building directly to the WebRTC standard itself. Uh, and a couple options that uh, there are others out there, but the two we most commonly talk to people about are uh, Janus and Jitsi as your open source media server options. Uh, you could definitely find more about those on their sites, and we'll talk more about those in other videos in this series as well. Our third option is CPaaS, which is our communication platform as a service. So this is our, our commercial option. It's going to have higher costs. We're going to pay according to the usage, how much traffic we're generating, how many, uh, perhaps how many minutes of usage we have, how many users are connected into calls, um, whether it's a broadcasting or a peer-to-peer -peer scenario can affect that. Uh, we're going to pay according to other features that we might want, like recording. Uh, and so there's definitely, definitely fees with this, but uh, the CPaaS is going to handle a lot of things for us. So this makes it uh, uh, a lot easier on your developers. Still need to have an understanding of live video applications. They still need to understand WebRTC and a lot about it. But the CPaaS does abstract a lot of that away for you. So potentially you can get to market faster with this. And so this is, that's the big reason uh, why a lot of our work for our clients is on a CPaaS, at least to start, because then you can get your product out there faster to market uh, with a lower upfront cost. Uh, you are going to have higher ongoing costs, so there may be a point in the future where you want to switch from a CPaaS to an open source solution, for example. Uh, but a CPaaS might be the fastest way to get your product idea out to market and prove its validity with your customer, which is a very important thing, obviously, to do. Uh, so the CPaaS is going to handle all of the WebRTC support for you in browser and mobile. They're going to give you libraries that handle the complexities of that for you. Uh, they're going to handle updates behind the scenes when browsers implement things differently or uh, maybe a, as uh, the WebRTC standard changes, they'll implement those new standards into it. They're going to handle all the media servers for you. They're going to handle all the stun and turn for you. So they're going to handle a lot of that complexity about us actually establishing the video connection between those users 
And um, you'll have very little control over how they do that. If things are going wrong, you may not be able to do anything about it. Uh, but um, but you are leveraging the fact that they have experts internally who are making that uh, as easy as possible and as high degree of success as possible. Uh, and then on top of that, CPASs often have other features, maybe specifically around the video itself, such as recording or broadcasting or transcription, or they'll often have other APIs that you can tap into as well if you need SMS text messaging or two-factor authentication or voice and vo uh, VoIP uh, telephony integration into your application. Uh, then those CPASs are going to offer that to you uh, as well. So that's a, 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 a very interesting option to consider if you need sort of a omni-channel application that's using multiple different communication methods. And uh, the CPASs we use most commonly are Vonage, Agora, and Twilio. Uh, there are others out there, especially if you're uh, looking at additional broadcasting options. There are other uh, platforms out there to look at as well, or platforms that specialize in a particular type of uh, industry, a particular industry vertical. Uh, so these are all a lot of a um, lot of options for you to consider here, and we're happy to help you think through that uh, as well. So ultimately, it really is just all about trade-offs. There's not a right or wrong answer here of which one of these three options do you want to use. Do you want to build directly to the WebRTC standard, use open source media servers, or use a CPaaS solution? It's just about balancing what's most important to you. Is your upfront cost most important to you? Do you want to keep that as low as possible? Probably want to go with a CPaaS. Is your ongoing cost most important to you? You already know that you're going to have millions of users and you don't want to pay uh, per minute fees for that. Then a CPaaS is going to be the higher cost solution for you in terms of ongoing and maybe it's worth it for you to go straight to an open source media server where you control the infrastructure. You have to control the complexity of scaling that to those millions of users, but your transactional costs of serving those users should be lower uh, if you're really at that scale. If you're wrong that you need that scale, it could end up being more complex because you've got to put more engineering effort into building directly to the WebRTC standard or maintaining the infrastructure around those open source solutions. Uh, the technical difficulty, uh, as well as sort of capability, the power that you have also varies along those. With a CPaaS, you're going to have the least control of how the media servers are used, how WebRTC is implemented. That's all abstracted uh, away for you, and you just have to trust that these people are experts who build the CPaaSes and, and that they're going to make the best decisions. If you really need some low-level access, then you're going to have to go straight to the WebRTC standard. For instance, um, one, one uh, application where we've seen that necessary before is if you have a, a unique piece of hardware, you want to uh, run a WebRTC on a new wearable device, for example, then you're probably going to need to compile the WebRTC libraries. You might need to do some C++ work, some low-level work to get it to work on that custom hardware or that embedded hardware. Um, however, if you're using uh, something like a Raspberry Pi, you can run an open source media server or access a CPaaS through that as well. Uh, so it just depends on your situation. How much access do you really need to those low-level details, whether it's worth it to you, the extra work that is going to be involved in uh, coding directly to the standard. Uh, and then the other consideration is, you know, what other features beyond the video do you need and maybe a CPaaS offers that to you, or maybe the open source media server solution that you look at has that feature built in. Uh, so that's another good reason to look at those as well. So it's all about trade-offs. There's, as usual, it depends which one is the right one for you. But we'd be happy to uh, talk with you about your solution in more detail, help you choose what's the right way for you to build your application. Is it a Weber, against the WebRTC standard? help you choose which open source solution or which CPaaS is going to be best for your specific needs. They all have different things that they're better at than the others. Uh, so uh, you can leverage our expertise in that. Contact us at WebRTC Ventures. Follow us on Twitter at WebRTC Ventures. We'd be happy to talk with you and your team more about your needs and help you bring your application live. And uh, don't forget to also follow this playlist on YouTube to get more great WebRTC tips like this. Thanks again for joining us today. I'm Aaron Syme, CEO and founder of WebRTC Ventures. Let's take your application live.
contact us.